Hi, welcome to Code with Carl. I'm Carl. In the last video, we added some extra circles to our Circle Wars game to make the game more interesting to play. We added a grey circle and a framey circle. Both of them made the game um, a little bit harder, but the trouble was when we had everything in the game all at once, it made the game overwhelming to play and it made it too hard to start with. What we're going to do today is add levels into our game so that rather than getting rid of these circles which do make the game more interesting we can spread them out over a few levels and make it so that at the start of the game on level 1 the game's fairly easy but then as you get further into the game we start to add different circles in to make the game a little bit harder. So adding levels is a really good way adding levels to your game I should say is a really good way of um, extending how long your game plays for and also so that the game doesn't get too overwhelming. You don't want to be bombarded by everything all at once. We can spread things out a little bit. So if I just switch to the, the version of the game from the last video, I'll just very quickly show you what was going wrong. So at the start of the game, we've got our two circles appearing, our red and green circles, but then once the gray and the friendly circles start to appear, it very quickly becomes overwhelming. So what we're going to have is add three levels to our game so that on level one we just have the green and red circle and then level two we have the green, the red and the frenemy circle and then on the last level, level three, we'll add the green, the red and the grey circle. The grey circle I thought was probably the one that made the game the hardest so we're going to save that until the last level. Um, adding levels is a really good way of extending your projects. Um, so this video might be something you can apply to your own project. Um, also, if you've um, already had a go at making Circle Wars um, yourself and you've added in your own circles that I haven't done, you can also um, add more levels to your game using the same code that I've done so that you can have extra circles and extra levels basically. I've only added two more circles in so I only need three levels for my game but you can always add more. Um, so. Now that we've um, had a look at the basic version of the game, we'll get to adding our level script. Most of the changes we're making today are going to be on the player sprite. Um, the player sprite is what controls winning and losing the game, so this is where we're going to add some extra things in, because the player sprite isn't just going to keep track of winning and losing, it's also going to keep track of which level that we're on. We're also going to add a way f for displaying messages. Rather than just using a say block to say you win, we're going to have a sprite that pops up on the screen with a certain message, so telling you which level you're on, and also saying if you've won or lost the game. It gives us more control than having um, these say blocks. It looks a little bit better because we can design the level, um, the messages, we can make them look um, a bit different. And also, you may have noticed, if you um, lose the game, the game will keep playing in the background because whilst it's saying you win or you lose for two seconds the game carries on in the background which especially if you touch the or if you lose the game by touching the grey circle is really annoying because you can see the score going downloads it's playing the, the sound it just doesn't look very good so we're also going to make it so that as soon as you win or lose the game the game stops immediately so we don't have that weird kind of carrying on section Anyway, we'll start by adding some script to the player sprite. We're going to change nearly everything on the player sprite, so there is quite a lot to change, but we don't want to get rid of everything. We can recycle some things, so we're going to move this script, or most of the script over here, and then we're going to build up a new script here and pull blocks in as we need them. The first thing we're going to do to set levels up is go to data and make a variable called level. This is going to let us keep track of which level the player is on, which is also going to affect which circles appear. So at the start of the game, we want to set the level to 1, because we're going to start on level 1. If you are adding a title screen, we might actually set the level to 0 to start with, and the z level 0 will be the title screen. I have actually done a, a video on adding a title screen to a game. It was for another game. But you should be able to use the same ideas for adding a title screen to Circle Wars if that's what you want to do. But I'm not doing that on this video. Check that out if you want to. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, so we're going to set the level to 1. Now, we're going to show a message for level 1. So we don't need to have this variable on the screen. So rather than having that clogging up the screen, we're going to use a hide variable block 
to get rid of that. That's the same thing as using these tick boxes. Um, some people think that unticking a box deletes the variable. It doesn't, it just hides it. The variable is, the variable is still there working in the background. It just doesn't display it on the screen. But we want that for the level variable because we don't want to see it. So we set the level to one, we hide the level variable, and now we're going to start using some of this code, but rather than being in a repeat block, we're going to be using a, sorry, rather than being in a forever block, we're going to use a repeat until block. This is going to be our main game loop. So this, um, any code inside of here is going to keep repeating until we get to the end of the game. Now the end of the game is going to be after you complete level three. So after you complete level three, our level variable will tick up to level four. So level four is the end of our game. So we're going to repeat this until level equals four. Once we've got to level, um, once we've got to level four, that's the end of the game. We're going to put a stop block in. Obviously, if you're adding extra levels in because you maybe put more circles in, or you just want to add more levels, you're going to be changing some of these numbers from what I've done. So what's going to be happening with our player sprite in a normal level? Well, this is where we're going to recycle some more um, blocks from our script from the last time. At the start of a new level, we're still going to set our score back to zero, and we're going to reset the timer so that we can keep track of the time in each game. And now we're going to make a few more changes to what we're doing here. So at the start of a level, we're going to set score to zero and reset the timer. And that's going to carry on until we've scored 20 points. So we're going to use another repeat until block. And this is going to repeat until we've scored 20 points to complete the level. So we'll, rep we'll use, or recycle I should say, this score more than 19 block from last time. We're basically getting rid of this you win section here. In fact, we don't need any of this now, so we can get rid of that. So when we're playing the game normally, it's going to repeat, or it's going to run the level until we've scored 20 points. So whilst we're on a level, we're going to go to the mouse pointer with a player sprite, and we're going to show what the time is. To lose a game, that's going to stay the same. We lose the game if we um, lose or if our score gets to less than minus 19 that's going to stay the same but rather than saying you lose and stopping the game we're going to use a broadcast block we have used broadcast blocks before from events broadcast blocks just let us send a message that other sprites can hear so the message we're going to send is going to be game over so at any point in the game if we ever get to less than minus 19 points it's going to go to the game over section. It's going to broadcast that message game over. This repeat section is going to carry on until we've scored 20 points, at which point we've completed the level. So when we complete a level, we want two things to happen. The first thing we want to do is clear all of the circles off the screen. We want to start each level with a, a clear playing field. So all of these circles, we want them to clear off. So we're going to use another broadcast block and we're going to broadcast another message which is going to be clear screen. Remember when you're um, setting up broadcast blocks it doesn't matter what the name of the message is that's just a label that's to help you. So I'm going to put clear screen just so I remember what that's doing later on. We want to clear the screen after we've scored more than 20 points so it's going to go after this second repeat until block under here. It's very easy here to make mistakes with where you put in blocks. For example, if I put this in this section, instead of clearing the screen at the end of the level, it will be clearing the screen all the time. We don't want it doing that. So I'll put broadcast clear screen there. The other thing we want to do at the end of a level is change our level variable to go to the next level. So we're going to change the level block or the change level variable by one. So if we're on level one, it's going to tick up to level two. At that point, our repeat until block is going to go back to the top and start a new level. So set the score back to zero, reset the timer, and then we can play through the next level. That's all we need to do. Oh, this forever block, we can get rid of that as well. That's all we need to do for the player 
the sprite. We've set up a way now for levels to increment each time so that we go from level one to level two. And we've set up a way, or we started to set up a way for losing the game and for clearing the screen. So the next thing I'm gonna do is sort out a way for each circle to clear off the screen. That's very simple, so let's get that done now. So if I go to the friend circle, we'll copy this, um, what we're doing now, we're gonna copy this for all the other circles as well. So if we go to events, get when I receive, clear screen, very simply, we want to delete this clone. So that any copies of the green circle on the screen are gonna disappear when they get that message saying clear screen. We're gonna copy that for the other circles as well. Any circle we're gonna clear off. So let's copy that onto the red circle and onto the gray and onto the frenemy circle. Um, when you're copying scripts like that, make sure you check where um, check that you've copied them properly. So let's go onto enemy and just check that that script is there. There it is. When you copy scripts, for some reason it just puts it in this top left corner and it can end up covering up scripts. So I'm going to just go through and just move those so that they're in the space of the row. So we've got a way now for these circles to be cleared at the end of each level. The last thing we're going to do on the circles before we finish off by setting up the messages, we're going to make it so that we only get the frenemy circles on level 2 and we only get the grey circles on level 3. So this is a nice easy thing to do. I'll start with the frenemy circle, we're only going to get these on level 2. Now if we look in our script, the way that we um, create um, frenemy circles or the way we put those on the screen is with this create clone block here. So we've got the master copy which is hidden, as there you can see it if I double click. We've got the master copy zooming around on the screen and then after each kind of repeat section it creates a clone which is what we can see. So here we're just going to put this in a if block and we're going to say if level equals 2. So if the level is, if, if we're on level 2 then create a clone of myself. If level is 1 then it's going to be zooming around and then when it gets to this section if level isn't 2, if level is 1, it's not going to make a copy of itself. So we're only going to get the frenemy circle now on level 2. We need to do the same thing for, le for the grey circle, that's just going to be on level 3. Again, if, you've, if you want to make other levels now with different combinations of circles, you can do that by using um, different combinations of um, if and instead of equals you could use things like less than or more than. So if you've got a circle which makes the game a lot easier, you could have that only appear in the first few levels of the game. So say if you had a circle that gave you 5 points instead of just 1, you might put something like if level is less than 3 and then it would appear on level 1 and level 2 but not level 3. I'm keeping mine simple though, so for my grey circle we only want that on level 3, so if we get another if block and for this one we're just going to put if level equals 3 create clone of myself. So the grey circles only appear on level 3, the friendly circles only appear on level 2, the red and green circles appear on every level. If we test what we've done now, we should have levels working and we should have different circles on different levels. Now whilst we're testing, I don't want to have to play all the way through the game, um, you don't want to watch me playing through three levels, so I'm just going to change this so that if my score is more than 2, or more than 1 I should say it will put me on the next level. It just lets me speed through the levels a bit quicker just whilst we're testing just to make sure everything works. If you've um, ever wondered why they put cheats in games um, this is one of the reasons why. When people are testing games they don't want to have to play through, a, if they're trying to test say the end boss they don't want to have to play through the whole game just to see if the end boss is working so the game developers might put a level select in. 
cheats like that are to help testers when they're testing the game. That's what we've done now. We've kind of put a cheat in our game, so we only have to score two points to get onto the new level. So let's see how that works. So here's level one. As you can see, we've got green and red circles, no gray or frenemy ones. So if I get two points now, you can see it cleared the screen. This should be level two now. Now I've touched a red circle there, so I'm going to have to um, get a few more points. Oh. I got on to um, level 3 there. You could see that Frenemy's circle started appearing. Here I am on the last level. Grey circle's there. And you could see, once I got to 2 points, it went, it stopped the game. So it looks like my levels are working, so I'll put the this score block here back to 19. So they have to score 20 points each time, rather than just 2. Um, the last thing we're going to do now is add a, a sprite to show messages that the player can see. Um, rather than using those save blocks which we've got rid of. So we're going to make a new sprite. Um, basically each costume is going to be a different message we want to display in the game. So we're going to need costumes for level 1, level 2, level 3. We're going to need another costume for winning the game which was going to happen when we get to level 4. And then we're going to have a final message for if you lose the game it's going to say game over. So because this is going to be text rather than something that we're going to be um, a drawing like a picture I'm gonna convert my sprite to a vector so this is on this button down here this gives us a little bit more control when we're doing text it lets us resize the text as well so we can make the um, level messages look nice and crisp so I'm gonna use the text tool now I've got a black background so I don't want to use black text I'm gonna use yellow text so I'll click my sprite my text tool there. This will be for level one. Now as you can see the text is far too small on the screen. I want it a little bit bigger for each level message. So I'll click somewhere else on the screen just to let me select this box. And now I'm going to make it bigger by using the resizing box on the corner. So that looks about okay size to me. I can look over on the stage and see that looks a lot better now. And I want this to be in the center. So where we've got this little green circle, I'm going to move that so it's over the gray cross, which is the center. And now I need to add costumes for level two, level three, as well as you win and game over. So I'm going to right click on this one, duplicate it. And now because it's a vector, I can just edit this text. I don't have to rewrite it. So I'm just going to change this one so it says level two. Do it again for level 3, so right click, duplicate, let's change it so it's level 3. I'm just selecting the text by just double clicking on it. This one's going to be for you win now, so I'll right click again, and we'll change this one so it says you win. As you can see it's kind of moved it over from the centre a little bit, so I'll just readjust it. I'm using the um, select tool to move the box around, so I'll put that green circle over the centre over that cross and then a final one for game over so right click duplicate or we'll just change it so it says game over just recenter it so those are our messages that we're going to use in the game and um, the way that we set the or the way that we're going to set this script up we need to make sure that the first um, or the level messages rather match up with the costume number. You can see the costume number in the top left corner there. So level one, level two, level three, and our you win message needs to be whatever our last level is going to be. And then the game over message goes after that. So we've got to scripts. Now we're going to set up um, what those broadcast blocks that we did earlier on, what they're going to do. So if we go back to player, remember we've got two broadcast blocks that we set up. Game over, which um, displays when we lose points or lost too many points. And then the clear screen block happens at the end of the level. So clear screen gets rid of the circles on the screen, but it's going to make our next level message show up. So yeah, clear screen is like our end of level message as well. Okay. First thing we want to do is set up our sprite so it's in the center. So we're going to use a green flag block. 
change it so that it's going to go to the center of the screen each time. We don't want it off to one side. So go to 0, 0, puts it in the center. And then at the start of the game, we want to make sure it's saying level 1. So when we click the green flag, it's going to switch costume to costume 1. And if we check on costumes, costume 1 is level 1. We want the messages for each level to stay up on screen for a few seconds and then disappear. So let's try um, two seconds, see if that looks okay. So control, wait two seconds, and then we want the level, oh, but then we want the sign to disappear. So we're going to get it to hide. Anytime we've got a hide block, it's always a good idea to put a show block in as well. So we want to make sure that we can see the message at the start of the game. So we'll put a show block before the switch costume. So now if I press play, the message comes up on the screen for two seconds and then disappears. So it's not in the way. That looks okay to me. Now, most of the time, it's going to be showing this message when it receives this clear screen message. So we'll get a events block when I receive clear screen. So at the end of a level, when it clears off the screen, what do we want it to do? Well, first, we want it to go to the next costume. So if we're on level one, the next costume will be for level two. So next costume, and then we're gonna use this show, wait, and hide kind of sequence again. So goes to the next costume, shows, so we can see it on the screen. Waits for two seconds so we can read what it says and then it's going to hide. And that is our sequence for when we get to the end of a level and it changes level and shows the new level message. The last thing we need to do before we can finish this is um, setting up game over. So if we go back to the player, when we lose um, too many points, it broadcasts the message game over. What do we want the level um, sprite to do at that point well when I receive game over we want it to switch to costume costume 5 which is our one that says game over remember that needs to come after all of your level messages and after your you win message so put that at the end so switch to costume 5 for us or for my project I should say and then show and then we're going to use a stop all block to actually stop the game. Okay, so oh, we don't need a comment. Let's get rid of that. Let's just tidy that up. So there's our messages set up. Let's test if that's all working. Again, I'm going to um, just adjust it so that we don't have to lose loads of points or gain loads of points to get the messages. So I'm just going to change these to 1 and minus 1 just for testing. So let's test if game over is working first. So there's the level 1 message. So you can see game over is working, it stops the game, um, shows the message, let's start a new game, see if that's okay. Yep, it's going back to level one, let's see if we can go through the game now. So level two, level three, each time it's changing level, it's um, clearing the screen for us, and then you win, and there we have it. So I hope that video was useful for you. Um, Adding levels is quite complicated compared to what we did in the last video. We have had to change a lot of the code, um, but it's something that's definitely worth adding to your game. At this point now, we could add more circles to our game and add extra levels in. Um, we can basically add as much as we want now because each level is not going to get too overloaded with things to collect. Um, I hope that was useful um, for you. You might also want to check out adding a title screen to your game, and that's in the other video. I'll put a link in the description. That's all I'm going to do on Circle Wars. Um, it is, it's a really good game. There's lots of things that we can add easily, but I don't want to make these projects too complicated, so we're going to leave that for Circle Wars for now. Um, next video will be a new project for us to start. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did like the video, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. Um, and yeah, 
we'll do some more videos very soon I'm trying to get a, a video out every every day the video should appear at nine o'clock in the morning so check yeah, check them out each day if you like um, happy coding and I'll see you again very soon